How would you like to learn to make tin birds? It's easy and it's fun. I developed the pattern in 2007 and since then I've made and sold hundreds of birds and on Etsy and craft fairs and museum shops. Here's an idea of the tools that you'll need. Um, let's see, the only thing that's not showing here that you'll probably need are some um, utility scissors. That would be a good thing to have. Um, regular house scissors are fine for cutting the aluminum. I prefer bonsai shears. So let's get started. Aluminum cans are everywhere. I think somebody threw this out of their car driving by our house. Um, you can see I've already taken the pop top off, which you want to save and put aside. Um, get your box cutter. There you go. Wear gloves. I don't wear gloves because I know um, how to do this uh, without getting cut generally. And actually I don't mind getting cut if it's a little bit, but um, you should wear gloves if you're inexperienced. Now you can use house scissors uh, to do this. I prefer the bonsai shears which are wonderful and uh, they're great for cutting um, all kinds of tin and metal. So I highly recommend them. You can get them on stonelantern.com for I think about $7 maybe. Uh, but they're just great. You wouldn't know it, but they are. So you want to make this into a sheet of aluminum. And if you are going to be dumpster diving for these, wear gloves. The hepatitis can live in dried blood for a week. So be really careful about that. Oh, and maybe get a tetanus shot before you start all this. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Okay, so here it's like a sheet of paper. And if you rub it on the corner of your desk or your table, it'll help flatten it out and it's easier to work with. Okay, so I don't want to use this. That's ugly. Okay. So here we've got a monster tin, which is really pretty, and an energy drink um, tin. It's all-star or something, I don't know. But this is lovely, and that's so great. Tins come in wonderful colors. Um, the aluminum beverage can, uh, it's just, it's amazing. You can make the best birds. Okay, so you've already cut out your pattern uh, from a cereal box. Um, I, it's much easier if you do it from a cereal box uh, the first time you cut out your pattern from regular paper because it's easier to use. It doesn't uh, move around as much and the ink doesn't soak into the paper. Okay, so you're going to do it one direction then you're going to pick it up and you're going to flip it over so that the other side will match up. And don't worry about getting Sharpie all over. You can clean it up with uh, rubbing alcohol afterwards. Okay. So, let's see. I think I want to have... Well, I think I want an orange tail. And there's the tail piece. If you go to jennyphilius.com and click on Tin Bird, you'll get a list of materials and the pattern. There's a, a printable uh, PDF. Now this is kind of fun. I'm matching up the beak with the design that's um, on the can to add interest. There's all kinds of fun ways to do this. Make your bird unique. All right. So it, it, it's just like butter, it cuts like paper, very easy to do. Don't get cut, you might still want to be wearing gloves. You can get really bad cuts from aluminum, surprisingly, really bad. And if the some of, like I say, some of the Sharpie, if it's showing, don't worry about it. You can clean it up with alcohol after the fact. Okay. All right, so go ahead and cut out the other one. Cut out the tail and the beak. And now let's look at the wings. 
This is the most hideous tin. I'm sorry. This is just, ugh. But if you position, oh, here, this is the utility. You make snips in the side, you know, like four snips, pull up three sections, and then take, um, I think these are called aviator shears. It's a kind of tin snip. And you can get in there. I like them because they have a long handle and it keeps my hand away from the tin. You can just go all the way around, cut it out. These are going to be awesome wings. This is so cool. That's the neat thing about this, is that you can pick out really interesting um, areas of crummy tins, and nobody would be the wiser that it came from a tacky tin. I love that. So again, with the uh, bonsai shears from stonelantern.com, So you can just turn the tin as you're cutting. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Okay, so all of our pieces are cut out. We're going to take the awl, and we're going to take our block of wood, and we're going to hammer a hole into it. Okay. And then... We're going to take the bird and the hole punch, and we're going to punch our hole in the bird. And then we're going to, okay, yeah, take that off of there. Then uh, we take the awl, put it through the hole, and put it into the hole of wood. Now what you're doing is you're making a mark with a Sharpie right where the awl is meeting the hole so that when you put the awl through the tin, the heavier tin, for the wings, you'll know how deep to go. Do you see the little line there? That's how deep you'll want to go, because that, that will match up your holes for when you put your pop rivet in. Okay? All right. So line it up there. Again, to get the uh, pattern and the... Uh, supply list, go to jennyphilius.com and click on Tin Bird. Okay, so now in, by doing this, you're going to have a little extra that comes out, and you want to hammer that flat, so you have to go back and forth a couple times because you don't want it to be too bunchy where you're going to put your pop rivet through. Now, if you have something called a Whitney Punch, uh, which is great, and if you're going to make a lot of these birds, I can't recommend it enough that you... Um, get a Whitney punch. I think they're $40. You can get them from grizzly.com and they're really great. They have a lot of different uh, size um, bits that you can, so you can, inter you can change them out and make different size holes and um, they're really great. But just to make a couple birds, you don't, you probably don't want to spend that. So, okay, that fits our uh, pop rivet nicely. I'll do the other one here. Okay, so the pop rivet fits. Nice. Now you take... Oh, there's the, that's the Whitney uh, punch. Yeah. Um, oh, it's falling apart there. Oh, okay, I'm not going to waste our time trying to put it back together right now. But it's really a wonderful um, device for punching holes in tin and metal. Okay, let's just put that aside. All right. So now we'll take our pieces of bird. We've got both sides. Put them together. You already have the one hole so you know where to uh, match up the other hole with the paper punch. Give it a good squeeze. All right. Okay, now remember you saved your pop top. You're going to put a hole in that. 
that's where the barrel's um, swivel snap is going to go. Okay. And then turn it over and do it again. I got so that I could assemble maybe seven of these an hour, six, six or seven. I would cut out the pieces. Um, I had a job where I had a lot of time, downtime, and I could just, I had to sit there sometimes for four hours, so I would cut out pieces, the bird pieces, while I sat there. And then I could just assemble them. So it went pretty well. Okay. All right, so the um, pretty part of the wing is going to go on, is going to, go on the inside as you can see and the just the metal color goes on the outside so you see how that goes there okay perfect and then you're going to add your uh, pop top let's see okay and then the other wing pretty side inside from that tacky pin okay and then the other bird body get everything nice and lined up then you're going to take an aluminum washer uh, and put it on the other side where it's poking through. And you know, it's probably overkill. You probably don't have to do that. But I want to make sure that my wings and my birds stay together. So I just do it. Probably probably not necessary, but um, I, I also, I, it gives it a more finished look. I, I just like it. Okay. All right. Okay, so you get your uh, pop rivet gun, you slide that in there, give it a good squeeze. Okay, good. And that's the way it looks on this side. Turn it over. Look at the other side where the washer is. Okay, now you're ready to do the tail. So that part you're folding in half. And you don't want to do it too much because aluminum that's folded um, will break. Also, too, if you put these outside, um, they will get rusty and they will fade. So it, they're better indoors. Okay, now you're taking your hole punch and you make a nice little hole there to put your eyelid in. Okay. Eyelets come in all different kinds now uh, at the craft stores. You can get them in different colors. Some of them actually look like little flowers. They're pretty swell. So that goes into the hole all the way through. Okay. Now this is where your uh, steel um, bench block comes in. And that's your setter, your eyelet setter. That, you can feel that just go in. And you're going to give it a couple taps. You don't have to smash it really hard for a long time or anything. You just see, look how lovely that is. Very nice. No, oh, very lovely. I sound like somebody's grandmother. Okay. Yeah, I'm just tidying it up a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell this is not an exact science. Okay. All right, now you're ready to add the beak. Now look how cool that is. That turned out really swell. I love using the patterns on the uh, materials at, to become part of the whole. Okay, I'm going to trim that up a little bit. Okay. Nice. We're going to have a happy little bird. Okay. Yeah, 
just a couple wax. There, nice. Okay, now here's the fun part, pulling the wings down. Oh, look at that. Isn't that swell? Nobody would ever guess that that was from that tacky uh, tin. Hmm, happy little bird. Okay, so now you add the uh, barrel swivel snap. There it is. That's probably a size 12, maybe a 14. I try and get the smallest ones I can. You can get them at Cabela's or Big Five or your local bait shop. And it fits just right into the hole that you made in the uh, pop top. Nice. And then I use, I get lengths of uh, 22 gauge um, wire. And I like the lengths rather than getting it on a spool just because I'm not very good at straightening out wire. Uh, you can see this one's kind of crooked and it's going to be a little funky. I like it. I prefer it to be um, straight. Okay. Just put that through there. Okay. Turn the end. Nice. And then turn the top for hanging, and there's your bird. Isn't that sweet? Look at that. So you can put it near a window or where your furnace comes on so that it, um, it spins when the air is going on or your air conditioner. And, and if you like, you can um, take your scissors and uh, snip the tail to make it look more like feathers. Yeah. All right. So let me know. Try it out. Um, and let me know. And... And uh, if yours turns out, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.